Black Money, that cryptic creature that dances in the shadows of the financial realm, is a subject both fascinating and ominous. It's like the phantom of the opera of the currency world, lurking in the dark corners, shrouded in secrecy, and more enigmatic than a Rubik's Cube with a missing piece. With the emergence of industrial football, terribly high amounts of money began to circulate in the football world, and this especially attracted the attention of the criminal world. This situation caused criminals who want to launder money in the football world to flock to this sector. Before we embark on our journey into the intricate web of money laundering in football, let's thoroughly explore the intricate tapestry of black money. What it is, how it comes into being, and why it's the bad boy of the financial landscape. Part 1. What is black money? Black money, known by various aliases such as dirty money or illicit funds, is a breed apart from the crisp, legitimate currency we use daily. It's the cold, hard cash with a questionable pedigree, originating from nefarious sources such as drug trafficking, extortion, embezzlement, tax evasion, or the classic granddaddy of them all, organized crime. This money thrives in the underworld, away from the prying eyes of tax authorities and law enforcement agencies. It's the renegade of the financial world, untraceable, untaxed, and unwelcome by governments worldwide. Money laundering, on the other hand, means making this illegally earned dirty money legally available through various transactions and incorporating it into the system without arousing suspicion. Thus, they may have so-called legal answers to the question of where did you get this money? To give an example, it is important to mention the man who exposed money laundering, namely Al Capone. Al Capone is one of the greatest mafia leaders in history and earned huge amounts of money from illegal activities such as loan sharking, moonshine, and gambling. In order to launder the money he earned, Al Capone used laundries to provide high cash flow. Al Capone established his own laundries and would show the money he earned illegally as if he earned it from these laundries, thus laundering the money. As you can understand, the term money laundering actually comes from here. Even the American police could not trace this money despite long efforts. In the end, they were only able to arrest Al Capone for tax evasion. But what sets black money apart from the money you earn through honest means, diligently paying your taxes and playing by the rules? Well, it's essentially tainted currency. While your hard-earned cash goes through legitimate channels, black money takes a detour through the murky waters of criminal activities. It's like the outlaw of the financial landscape, seeking refuge in the underground economy. Criminals adore it because it's the ultimate cloaking device, making their ill-gotten gains almost impossible to track. Think of it as the invisibility cloak of the financial world. Black money isn't confined to mere bundles of cash hidden under a mattress or stashed away in a shoebox. It can take on many forms, from offshore bank accounts to investments in assets like real estate, luxury goods, or even entire businesses all acquired under false identities or through complex networks of intermediaries. The ingenuity of those involved in money laundering knows no bounds, as they continually seek out new and inventive ways to legitimize these ill-gotten gains. If we go into more detail about what these money laundering methods are, I can give a few examples of methods. The first method I can explain is process fragmentation. For example, we have $10 million of black money, since a sudden transaction with this black money will attract attention, thousands of transactions worth $300 to $400 are made instead of one transaction. And thus, black money can be laundered piece by piece. The second method is the Smurfs method. In some countries' banks, amounts over a certain amount must be reported. However, since amounts below a certain amount are not reported, the black money in hand is distributed to thousands of people with the money to be given below the limit, and then the collected money is returned to the owner of the black money. There are many other money laundering methods such as casinos and loans taken from different countries. And on top of this, modern money laundering methods emerged. Criminals who have dirty money and want to launder it make deals with streamers with low viewers, especially on the Twitch platform. They donate this dirty money to these streamers via bits, and then they divide the dirty money half and half with the streamer they donated the money to. In this way, the money owner can launder his money, and the low-income streamer, who already has low viewers, earns a good profit. In addition, the cryptocurrency market, which is very difficult to track and has fast transactions, has become one of the modern centers of these money laundering efforts. 
I tried to explain to you briefly and simply what money laundering means. Now let's take a look at why Football World is one of the favorites of criminals when it comes to money laundering. Part 2. The Dance of Dirty Money in Football It all starts when an investor who wants to launder the money he has buys a failing club. This investor comes with promises that he will save the club from the difficult situation it is in and uses this as the excuse for his investments, but we know that his only concern is to launder his money. Now let's take a look at the black money transactions this investor made with this club he bought in order to launder his money. Now, think of player transfers as the opening act. It's like a magic trick where a club willingly pays way too much for a player. The extra money, beyond what the player is actually worth, becomes a sneaky way to move black money back into the hands of the schemers behind the scenes. It's like pretending to pay for a hamburger with a wad of cash, and while the cashier is counting, you grab some extra bills back. Except in this case, we're talking millions. In other words, a player whose value is normally 5 million euros is sold, and the person who wants to launder money reports that this player was sold for 30 million euros on paper. Thus, 25 million euros of dirty money is brought into the club. This is one of the most important ways of laundering money in football. But wait, there's more to this financial spectacle. Sponsorship deals, those flashy logos on jerseys and in stadiums, can also play a part in this money laundering magic show. Imagine a mysterious company becoming a sponsor, paying way more than it should. The extra cash can then be siphoned off quietly, leaving the club with a sudden boost, and the money launderers with a cleaned up image and pockets full of freshly laundered money. Or imagine that a club normally plays its matches with 3,000 spectators. The person who wanted to launder his money showed it as if 20,000 tickets were sold, although there were normally 3,000 spectators, and laundered his money with the profit in between. In order to increase the amount of money laundered, ticket prices were increased above normal. Also, the person who wanted to launder money filled the stadium with people he found on the street, and by giving the impression that the stadium was full, suspicion was not aroused. Here's a foolproof way to launder money from football. Apart from these, there are also methods of money laundering such as exorbitant manager fees and people pretending to have lent money to the club and then taking the money back. In this grand play of financial moves, football becomes more than just a sport. It becomes an unwitting player in a money laundering dance. The game's complexities go beyond goals and trophies, weaving a story of financial intrigue that's almost like a blockbuster heist movie. Since football is an entertainment industry with high volumes of money, it is easy to enter the football industry, and there are many elements into which black money can be divided such as football managers, football players, it is a favorite of those who want to launder money. Now, in the third part of the video, let's take a look at real-life examples of money laundering in the football industry. Part 3. Some real-life examples of money laundering in football. Let's take a closer look at some notable cases that illustrate how black money has infiltrated the world of football. Barcelona faced scrutiny over the signing of Neymar, the Brazilian superstar, as questions arose regarding the true value of the transfer and the undisclosed fees involved. It was suspected that the actual transfer amount was far greater than what was officially declared, potentially involving hidden payments and various stakeholders benefiting from the shadowy funds. Finally, we was learned that the former president of Barcelona earned 15 million euros of illegal income from the Neymar transfer, and the Barcelona president was caught trying to launder this money. Another example of money laundering through football was Pablo Escobar. Even though Escobar was not the official president of Atletico Nacional, he was actually running the club behind the scenes. As we mentioned about the methods of money laundering through the football industry, Escobar was transferring a player whose value was normally low for a high price and making a player he sold for 5 million euros appear on paper as if he had sold him for 10 million euros. Moreover, even though the stadium looked empty, miraculously more than 35,000 tickets were sold. I think you understand what I mean. Luis Felipe Vieira, one of Benfica's important presidents, was also arrested on the grounds of money laundering. Back in 2005, German footballers Lukas Podolski and Bastian Schweinsteiger were part of a transfer deal from Bayern Munich to FC Köln. 
This deal raised eyebrows due to the involvement of several offshore companies. Investigations pointed to potential money laundering as it appeared that the transfer fees had been inflated with the excess funds channeled through secretive financial routes. In the past, even the father of the living legend Lionel Messi was on trial for money laundering. Popescu, a successful Romanian football player, was arrested with his five friends for money laundering and tax evasion. Popescu remained in prison for 570 days. It was determined that 12 football clubs in the Belgian league laundered more than 30 million euros of money. These real-life examples shed light on the underbelly of money laundering in football. The beautiful game with its passion, glory, and global appeal is also a fertile ground for those seeking to cleanse their illicit funds. For all these reasons, there should be more transparency when making transfer agreements, sponsorship agreements, and ticket sales, and all of these should be inspected by a reliable, authorized institution. We hope that this beautiful game, which gives hope and entertainment to people, can get rid of the money laundering problem as soon as possible.